Hello, everyone. Uh, we warmly welcome you for this joint webinar between WSU2 and Typing DNA, uh, where we will explore the integration of Typing DNA's Typing Biometrics technology with WSU2 CIM product. Uh, I'm Omidu from WSO2 Identity and Access Management team. And with me, I have Raul, the CEO and co-founder of Typing DNA, joining for this webinar. Uh, welcome, Raul, uh, and thanks for joining uh, us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Omidu, for the invite to co-host this uh, webinar. Right. So uh, Raul and I will be discussing about the benefits of Typing Biometrics and how Typing DNA can be integrated with WSO2 CI products. Uh, so before moving further, let's have a quick look at WSO2 CIM offering. Uh, WSO2 has a range of products that helps you to build an exceptional digital experience for your customers. Um, our product por portfolio includes platforms for both customer identity and access management and integration. Uh, our CIM platform provides modern IAM capabilities to uh, build a secure and convenient authentication experience for customers. Um, the platform comprises of uh, WSO2 Identity Server, uh, which is an on-prem on open source identity and access management product. Um, and we do have Ascario, which is our CIM SaaS solution. And we have uh, the prior CIM cloud, which is a fully managed cloud by WSO2 and dedicated for the customer. Uh, so this product provides capabilities covering single sign-on, identity federation, adaptive access, um, account management, provisioning, consent management, uh, identity and analytics, and B2B CIA. Uh, so then we have our integration platform. Uh, this includes WSO2 API Manager, uh, again, an open source on-prem API management solution. This helps you to build, integrate, and expose your digital services as managed APIs. Um, so Corio is uh, our SaaS application development suite. Um, so it also comes with API management, iPaaS, and DevOps capabilities, and helps you to build, deploy, monitor, and manage cloud-native applications. Uh, then we have uh, WSO2 private API integration cloud. This is similar to the private CIM cloud and is also a fully managed, uh, fully managed by WSO2 itself and a dedicated deployment for you. Um, so. In addition to that, we also have industry accelerators targeting financial and healthcare domains. Um, these solutions are also built on top of our CIM and integration products. Um, the combination of our CIM and integration platform is what helps our customers to build um, best-in-class digital experience for their businesses. Okay, so moving on to the uh, main topic. All right. So in uh, today's digital business landscape, uh, the IAM layers uh, plays a crucial role, right? So it provides protection to your digital products and services from bad actors. Um, organizations uh, have implemented different forms of multi-factor authentication mechanisms to enhance the security, but uh, these static authentication policies can also negatively impact the user experience. Uh, so striking a balance between security and user convenience is essential when designing a customer's journey. So to achieve this balance, um, the authentication policies have become more adaptive uh, and it's based on the context of the user's authentication. So which means additional security is needed only if the user is identified as a risk. Um, however, the way you determine this risk factor should also be considered very reliable. Uh, typing, typing biometrics, um, which is a form of behavior biometrics authentication, is one such way of reliably evaluating the risk, uh, the risk associated with the user by the way a user types on their keyboard. Um, using typing biometrics as a form of risk evaluation for adaptive authentication can be considered more secure, uh, as a typing pattern can be considered as a unique behavior of that user. Uh, at the same time, it's difficult to imitate by another party. So this is uh, the, your unique behavior becomes your unique key. Uh, so this also makes authentication process a lot more convenient for end user. Um, so as they only have to uh, provide the two-factor authentication mechanism only if the typing pattern is irregular. Uh, so additionally, the enrollment process is also fairly easy. Uh, it can be done behind the scenes and without needing any special devices. So in this case, uh, the only device you need is a keyboard. 
Um, so Raul and his team at uh, Typing DNA has made this evaluation much more easier uh, throughout through their product uh, and enable us to build this great integration with them. Uh, I'll hand over this uh, presentation to Raul uh, to walk us through about their product and further discuss about our biometrics and their benefits. Raul? Uh, thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Um, thank you for the uh, all the all the positive words in explaining how this works. Uh, let me just start with this uh, with this slide. So uh, a little bit about Typing DNA. So Typing DNA is a Google-backed company, uh, basically backed by uh, Gradient Ventures, one of the actual the Google AI's fund. Um, we started developing this technology of technologies around typing biometrics in 2016. So we have uh, through the through the years we build a number of partnerships with uh, some of the companies that you found here. Here are some clients and, and partners, uh, selected clients and partners of ours. Um, obviously, WSO2 is one of the partners as well. Um, what we we are known for is. Uh, the typing uh being the typing biometrics company and uh if you if you look online about us you'll find uh, a lot of a lot of great things uh about typing dna uh our technology is already being used in a number of uh, uh domains from banking insurance to education um, we have really good reviews on Gartner and and Captera and other other um, uh, websites like that, and pretty much all the main websites uh, that talk about technology at some point talked about typing DNA. Now I don't want to brag uh, too much about ourselves, just to let you know that this is not a completely new technology. Maybe it's new to you and to most audience, which is fine, but. Uh, We've been uh, working uh, for a few years uh, on this, and we achieved uh, the best in class technology, by far the best in class. And there is a uh, uh, really no other company that did a better job so far. So even if it's not uh, hundred percent perfect, this is the best you can get in terms of typing biometrics. Um, just to, to go forward. So a little bit about how the technology works because everybody everybody has a question when we start talking about typing DNA. Okay, what, what you're looking at? So we're looking at the timing between the keys and how long you press the keys. Whenever you type in something on your keyboard, you're moving through the keys. And uh, it, it, depend, it doesn't matter what language you're typing in, whether you're typing in English or in Spanish or in Chinese. You will type in on the key on the keyboard, and you type in the key uh, the keys um, the keys, and those keystrokes matter. And it's not important the language; it's important uh, how long you keep each key pressed and how, how how much time it takes to move to the next key. And we developed this cool technology where we build this uh, typing patterns based on how you type in your username, password, your and pretty much anything. And then based on that, we authenticate by looking at preview samples that you recorded at a previous session. And we, we can use that to authenticate you against your previous uh, um, uh, logins. Now, a little bit about um, adaptive authentication, exactly the integration that we have with uh, WSO2. So normally, normally in a in an application that have an MFA or a two FA system, we're looking at the top uh, top uh, right uh, side. We have this uh, login, and then after the login, you have a code that is either sent over uh, SMS message or uh, it's a TOTP authenticator or a push notification sort of app, some sort of or a, a physical token that will generate this code. There's many ways in which you can do this, or it can be a magic link or something more fancy at this point. But the point is you have a physical two-step that requires your action as a user. And after that, once you verify with that, now you're locked in. So this is a traditional 2FA system. Now where typing DNA comes in is, uh, is here. So when you're typing in username, password, 
uh, you may see this uh, icon here. Basically, we're looking behind the scenes how you type those username and passwords. And then if we recognize that typing pattern through authentic way, uh, authentication, you don't have to do the 2FA. The actual code, uh, active code uh, uh, step. So you just need you just need to type in normally, and then you go to the next step. Now, just a few a few things, and then uh, then we can uh, give uh, you know back uh, the microphone to Omidu for a quick demo. Uh, just a few a few things. So you will say, okay, but not uh, everybody types in their passwords. Some use uh, password managers. That is that is true. Uh, I personally use password managers. About the third of population, all the way up to maybe almost half of population, would uh, use will use a password manager. So they will not need to actually type the username password. In that situation, the two F, the traditional two FA is the only way to go. But the thing is, uh, this is handled behind the scenes. You don't need to care about this. For those people who actually type. We can take uh, take care of it, and if you want to use use um, uh, to use the password manager system, then you will have to put in your two FA. But here's the thing: the the people who type in their passwords, so those who actually type in that don't use the password manager, those are the problem, and not the people are the problem. But that is the problem when you type in your password because. You cannot type in passwords that are very complicated. People don't remember very complicated passwords. So in order for them to be able to type them, the passwords are very simple usually, and they are uh, they are being used on multiple platforms. That's what, so people who type in passwords will reuse them in multiple places, which makes them easier to, to steal. And in a credential stuffing attack, uh, they may fall very easily. So basically, it's exactly where you need this kind of protection. So protection comes in exactly where you need it. And uh, even in that case, even a, two, a regular 2FA may be less secure because uh, the, the username password is already weaker. So uh, I think that's uh, that's very important. So that's where typing DNA comes in, uh, comes in play. Uh, there's another slide about benefits. I'm not sure if you want to go right now into it or you want to do a demo first, Omidu. Um, I'm fine either way. Um, shall we jump into the demo first then? Let's then do that. Can... All right. Okay. So let me quickly brief you through what we offer out of this uh, integration, right? Um, so with this collaboration, we are offering a pre-built integration with typing DNA in the form of an adaptive authentication function. Uh, so if you are familiar with uh, the WSO tools, identity uh, service or identity platforms, adaptive functionality, this is where we provide a JavaScript uh, based function where you can perform different uh, operations by using this uh, JavaScript. Uh, so, uh, typing DNA, similarly, we have provide, uh, provided a pre-built adaptive authentication script. Uh, so using this script, we can integrate with typing DNA, pass the typing pattern back to typing DNA servers or other APIs. Um, and based on the evaluation from typing DNA, we can make uh, certain decisions in the authentication flow. Uh, could be prompt another factor or stop the authentication flow at all based on the uh, certainty or uncertainty of that typing uh, uh, pattern matching, right? Um, so uh, again, this integration is uh, open source again, and it's on the Apache 2 license, um, supported from WSO2 Identity Server 6.0 onwards. Uh, and also for our private CIM cloud users, uh, this integration is also available in the uh, private CIM cloud as well. Um, so yeah, let me quickly walk you through the demo. I have a small demo that will capture the essence of this integration. Um, right. Okay. Okay. So first, uh, this is where you can download the typing DNA connector. So uh, this is our connector store. Um, simply a Google search will land you in this uh, connector store page. 
um, you can download the authenticator and the artifacts and we have uh, documentation hosted uh, in our doc space. So this document uh, captures like end to end uh, on uh, how the typing DNA uh, connector or rather authenticator can be configured and uh, how to like adaptively configure the authentication flow by integrating with uh, typing DNA. Um, so uh, I do have a slide on the demo scenario. Let me quickly jump there as well. Okay, so what I'm going to demonstrate today is uh, we have a user who's trying to access an application. Uh, so during uh, the authentication uh, flow, user types in their username and password. So identity server or rather identity WC2 servers uh, behind the scene collect the user's typing pattern. And upon submitting the user credential, uh, we verify the uh, verify the user's typing patterns against typing DNA. And let's say if it's a match, uh, we authenticate the user right away. In case if it's a poor match, uh, we prompt for a second factor. Uh, only after the second factor, we redirect the user back to the application. Uh, all right. So in order to configure this uh, integration, we have to uh, first set up, download and install the connector. So which I do have uh, already installed uh, set up with me for this demo. Uh, the first thing is uh, you have to configure the, uh, let me quickly log in. Sorry, okay. Um, so first thing you have to configure the API keys with uh, typing DNA. So um, if you're a developer who's just want to try out, uh, typing DNA is freely available uh, up to a certain uh, limit. So you can freely get the API access tokens and secrets and configure, and you can specify um, which region you want to uh, integrate with. It could, could be EU or US. And if you are a pro, or enterprise use of typing DNA, you can make use of the advanced capabilities of the typing DNA APIs. Um, in this case, uh, you can take these off and uh, save the settings. So then uh, I need to configure my application, uh, which is, uh, I have this sample of one ID connect based application, we call it uh, just taxi app called uh, Pick up dispatch. So I want to configure this application uh, so that if the user's typing pattern does not match with their regular typing behavior, I want to prompt a second factor authentication, right? Uh, so I have already configured all the protocol related configurations to this uh, uh, inbound authentication configuration. So what's important here is how I can control the adaptive, uh, so rather control the authentication sequence adaptively uh, through these configurations. Okay, so there's two uh, steps. Technically, there's two steps in this authentication. The very first step is where the user types in their username and password. So we configure as username and password as the first step of the authentication. And the second step is a TOTP or like Google Authenticator, if you're more familiar with that term. Uh, so the, the second step is the TOTP, but the only catch is this this authentication factor needs to be prompted only if the user's typing pattern does not match with their regular typing behavior, right? Uh, so how I am going to do that? So we have this adaptive authentication uh, capability. So we use a uh, JavaScript style. Basically, uh, this is run, run on top of a JavaScript engine. So um, you can easily, uh, write your authentication sequence using this uh, script editor. Uh, so we have the first step. This is the mandatory step where the user has to uh, enter their username and password. Uh, so upon the successful authentication of that username and password, um, uh, we can invoke the typing DNA APIs. So this is the adaptive function that we have uh, developed uh, consuming the APIs of the uh, typing DNA. So behind the scene, we are passing the uh, typing patterns that we captured during the authentication flow. 
and then passing it to the type in DNA APIs and get their results. So based on the uh, based on the results, uh, we can see whether the typing DNA has identified this as a, a verified user or not. So depending on the condition, we can say, okay, if this user is not verified, uh, prompt for second factor. But in case if the user is verified, you can uh, omit executing this sec second factor altogether. Right, so let's quickly see this, this action. Um, so this is my sample application. Um, so I have a pre-configured user uh, that I'm using uh, for this demo. Uh, so what so important notice here is if this user is new to the system during the first couple of, right, to be precise, the first three authentication, uh, we use the, this data to train type in DNA. Rather, it's sort of an on enrollment process. The first three authentication attempts, um, we fetch uh, sort of push the typing patterns to typing DNA. So from that point onwards, typing typing DNA can uh, uh, effectively evaluate the user's typing pattern. So in this user, uh, the, the user I'm using for this demo, I have already uh, uh, sort of enrolled user, uh, did a couple of logins and uh, did a couple of successful logins. And uh, the user typing pattern is uh, shared with the typing DNA service. Now, uh, let me demonstrate a successful authentication uh, flow. Uh, so in this case, uh, if, uh, so Sam, the regular user, if it's a regular user, I should be able to authenticate without getting prompted uh, for the second fact, right? So I use, a, use the regu my regular typing pattern which I used to authenticate with this user. Uh, so typing back, typing DNA behind the scene recognizes typing pattern and identify this as a legitimate user. And based on that result, the WS2 server decides, okay, this is this has been successfully verified by typing DNA, so no need to uh, prompt for a second factor. Okay, so let me mimic a error scenario, right? So I'll log out, log in again. Okay, so I'm logging in, but this time my typing pattern is very slow, right? Okay. So here you can see uh, you are getting prompted to enter the TOTP. So only after, let me quickly authenticate. Uh, only after the authentication, um, you will get, uh, only after providing the TOTP, you will get directed back to the uh, application. Okay, so uh, that's about the, uh, uh, the, the demo. Let me quickly uh, dive, dive back into the presentation. So Raul, uh, shall we take the audience through the benefits of typing DNA uh, next? I just want to add that, uh, so we see this uh, demo here with uh, email and password. Uh, which contains a lot more text than the one you showed the audience. And I think the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think most people will have longer usernames or emails using the, in the login and longer passwords. You had like uh, five uh, yeah. keys of passwords. Uh, I sort of picked the shortest possible allowed yeah. username for yeah. this. <laughs> now, I, I want to explain this is not... Uh, some magic sauce here it's basically we're looking how you type and if you type very few characters the accuracy drops so uh the point is uh the shorter the text uh less accurate the technology is it works pretty fine for most people you will not see a big difference but uh the longer text will be almost always will, will be authenticated correctly now if you have a little shorter text or if you like maybe break your arm or something like that, you may fail. And a lot of people ask, okay, what happens if I fail the authentication, if I'm drunk or something? First of all, you should not log into your company uh, platform if you're drunk, you should not work. But let's say you want to do that or you have your arm broken and something, something like that. Then you get the 2FA like you normally would. Uh, so it's not it's not that big of a deal. You saw Omidu uh, failing and then he needed to put his uh, TOTP code. So basically that is happening anyway. 
the whole idea of typing DNA, and this is, a, we're jumping into the benefit, is basically you are not required to put in your code all the time. And most of the time you will not be required to do that if you type in your username and password or your credentials, right? So because of that, you uh, you have a better user experience. And that translates to uh, better engagement, uh, lower churn, uh, more time for people to do their actual their actual job instead of uh, spending time uh, trying to log in. Also, a lot of the times the 2FA that is in place requires a phone. So it requires you to either the TOTP authenticator or SMS OTP or push notification, depending on what uh, 2FA you're using or you're, uh, you have already integrated. Uh, you're gonna be you're gonna need to use your phone and the problem with the phone is that sometimes you don't have it around you sometimes it's uh, somewhere else you have to log in so it's not just you put in your code no that's what you see in the app but actually to get that code is another few steps so uh, most of the times you don't really need to do that if you're typing in your username and password you know that's that's what we that's why we call it adaptive authentication because we adapt if it's if the user seems to be somebody else, then we we show the code. If it's not somebody else, then uh, or it looks like it's the person who who logged in previously, they should just be allowed in. Now, um, I also want to explain that, uh, like uh, like with the codes, for example. So you have uh, a six code uh, a six code uh, option with the OTP, but let's say with with your credit card, you have a four uh, digit pin uh, because of that uh, that pin allows you to verify your identity but it's not unique it's not like somebody would be able to trace you back based on your pin there's millions of people who have exactly the same pin in the same way there's a lot of people who type very similar to you so if let's say a thousand people will type in your credentials some of these uh, one or two people will be able to type exactly like you or very similar the the way this work is not that it's so unique that it replaces password it doesn't replace password but it's so unique that it can verify identity very well it can verify ownership of oh you're the owner of these credentials you're the person who type who types like this now couple that with the actual password which only you should know is a very strong very strong combination so that's that's how it works and that's um that's why it works well um so uh we reduce the need to use a 2fa uh a normal 2fa it's like you don't have it's like an invisible 2fa you don't have the 2fa but you have it and uh, you don't require a phone that's very important and this is uh, important for both workforce so if you want to authenticate employees or if you want to authenticate consumer uh Consumers, you want for consumers the main uh, main objective is to reduce churn. You don't want people to uh, leave. You don't want people to not finish their shopping cart or not finish whatever they're doing in your app. So because of that, you want to make uh, you, their user experience as seamless as possible. And the login is the first step. If, if they don't get in, then they will not be able to finish the job. Uh, now, with the with the workforce, uh, one of the most important uh, things that we're seeing now is uh, employees don't want to use their personal devices, their personal phone for 2FA. And if there's anything like this in place, it's like they're not obligated to use their phone. It's like that's an option or that's a fallback. So um, it also solves a little bit on the legal side because uh, uh, large employees already started having these problems where uh, large, uh, large companies have this problem that employees uh, are asking, are actively asking for a uh, no phone based UFA. Now, on top of all this, we have this um, ability to lower costs because if you, for example, do SMS OTP as a second factor, you don't have to do it most of the time. So your cost with SMS OTP drops and uh, calls in the authentication API of typing DNA are actually cheaper on average, significantly cheaper, cheaper on average. Now uh, we're stepping into the cost part of thing very quickly. Uh, so if you're using typing DNA with WSO2, you will have to have an account with typing DNA. 
It's not complicated. You head to typingdna.com or put typing DNA in Google. You will find uh, your way very easily. And there is a client or a developer account that you have to log in. And there you will have your typing DNA authentication API credentials, your API key, everything that it, that, that Omidu showed you that uh, you need to put in, in the integration. It's there. But the initial account will be limited to like 100 users per month. So if you have more users that are using the platform, and normally pro probably you do have more users, you should have a premium account. Now there is a way you can just use the use the the website to uh, pay as you go. Uh, but if you have a large uh, volume, uh, please come to us directly, or uh, you have uh, you have. Uh, a contact form on the website where you can ask uh, ask us to give you a better price, in which we will, because we want to uh, WSO to uh, clients to have the best uh, the best price. So please uh, ask for a better price. We will give you a better price uh, for for you based on the volume that you estimate. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's very easy to integrate. I mean, Omidu showed you a few you know JavaScript and a few things to set up but there's a it's a sequence of things you need to go through it's a few steps uh there's a nice youtube video that somebody already did i think it's like uh, 10 15 minutes you go through it you can set it all up and it uh, works out of the box you don't even have to become a premium typing dna client to just to make it work because the free account would allow you to set it up and then once you set it up you can uh, activate your premium typing DNA. So it's a uh, it's very very easy from the integration point of view. You have all these benefits. It will reduce costs. It will do churn. It will, it will improve user experience. You don't need a phone around all the time. And whenever this fails, we just prompt you uh, with whatever two FA you have uh, you're using. Probably a TOTP as Omidu uh, showed, but can be other things. Uh, uh, but then you will be basically the client will be or the employee or whoever logs in. Uh, will be prompt with that uh, prompted with that um, uh, 2FA to second factor. Um, so that's that's how it works. I hope I, uh, I went through everything. Usually all the things that I mentioned that are questions that I get you know after we, we talk about the technology with other people. Uh, Omidu? Yeah, so thanks Al. Um, so uh, as Shal mentioned, uh, if you have any questions, um, please like reach out to us even like uh, it's okay to drop a mail directly to me or Raul and if you have any clarifications need to be done. Or else uh, our contact forms are available uh, either through WSO2 or typing DNA. Uh, you can directly fill out the form and uh, get through to us and we're happy to help you. And also um, if you're a WSO2 community user, you can also reach us through um, Slack, uh, sorry, Discord or uh, stack Overflow collectives um so we are happy to assist you throughout this integration again it's a it's a very straightforward like a lot of stuff it's mostly copying and pasting um pretty easy like i was setting this up for this demo it took me like 10 minutes to get everything setting up given that i had the typing dna account um and it worked very well actually right so uh, uh very uh uh, consistently identified the typing pattern. Um, so yeah, so that's it from us with this webinar. Um, so we truly hope that you found this information uh, valuable and insightful, uh, and you hope you have got a better idea of how um, integrating WSO2 products with typing DNA can help you to build a better and a secure experience for your user. Um, do reach to us if you have any questions. Um, thank you for sticking around with us to throughout this webinar. And Raul, thanks a lot for joining me with us uh, and taking your time to present this webinar with us. Uh, it was a pleasure working with you and your team. Uh, it has been a very nice experience overall. Um, looking forward to connecting with you in a in a future webinar as well. All right. See you. See you. Thank you.